and welcome to this video tutorial on form fields content element now in this video tutorial i'm going to show you how you can collect lead information from individuals that go through your quiz or your piece of content on lead quizzes to do this you have to first of all be logged into your lead quizzes three account go into your piece of content go to the build tab under the build tab, you'll see the content element section where you'll see the content elements you have. Now in there, you have the form fields element. Now you drag the form fields element over to the content element section on the right hand side of your screen, and then you drop it in there. Now this will open up a form builder where you can add your form header and you can add whatever fields you want to add to this particular form field. All right, now for the form header, this is optional in the sense that you can decide not to have a form header in your form field. But if you do decide to add a form header, you drag the form header over to the header section on the right hand side and you drop it. This will open up the um, configuration space for the form header. In here, you can add your title and give a description. So let's say title, I wanna have All right, so this title is basically used to describe what kind of form this is. All right, so for this form, I want them to fill the information below before they can see the results to the quiz or the content they just took um, in my um, platform. Now you can also add a description, all right, but I wouldn't do that right now and I'll save it. Now next, you move on to adding the form fields you wanna have in this, um, form field all right so you move on to add in the fields you want to have in this form field now we have the first name the last name which um basically have the same settings so the first name you drag you drop to add a first name now you can change the label so say for example you want to have first name in a separate language other than english you can edit this to um first name you can also add a placeholder so i can have a placeholder that says um give your first name and as you can see, it appears in here as a placeholder. Finally, you can decide to make this field required or not. Now, if you do decide to make this required, enable the mark field required, and you'll see it's gonna add an asterisk um, to the top of um, this particular field, and then you save it. All right, now you can add multiple first name fields. So the fact that you have this field in here doesn't mean that it will be closed out for you. So I can also decide to add another first name field to my form field and I can change the label to let's say middle name. All right, I can add a placeholder, I can decide to make this field required or not. All right, and I save it. And that is similar to the way the last name um, works as well. Now next we move on to the email address. Now for the email address, this field um, is automatically set to required. All right, because you need one email address that's gonna serve as the lead email in your report responses. All right, so if you have just one email address, it's automatically gonna serve as the um, lead email address. Okay, now as you can see in here, it says this email field is the lead email field. All right, and it's been set automatically to required. So just like the other fields, you can change the label and you can add a placeholder and you save it. Now, say for example, I wanna have a second email address in there. Now, if I add this, you can see now I have the option to make this second email address um, the lead email address, okay? So if I select this as the lead email address and I save it, you'll see lead email unique identifier has been added to the second email address. All right, if I head back to the first one I added and I decide to make this required since now it's opened and I save it, you can see this email address has been um, set to the unique identifier um, email for responses. All right, now with the phone number field, all right, this is used to collect um, leads phone numbers. All right, so you can change the label. You can decide to enable a country code, which is serves as a verification process um, for this particular field. So if I decide to enable the country code, I can select what countries 
I want their phone numbers to um, be collected by this field. All right. So say for example, I just want to have United States. Now you can see one item selected. If I go to the country code section on the preview and I click on the drop down, you'll see just United States country code is in there. So um, whatever phone number I have to put in here have to be related to this code. So I can now put a phone number for let's say Serbia because this country code is verified to um, United States of America. So in here, you can add as many country codes as you want just to ensure that you have the right information being sent um, into your data base or into your reporting section. All right. Now, for number, so once country selected, you can make this field required or not, and then you save it. All right. Now, next, we have the long and the short answers. Now, these fields are used to collect um, other informations that um, the, the form fields are not present in here. All right. So, say for example, you want to collect something like, say, the home address. And as you can see, we don't have a field in here for home address. You can decide to have or use the short or the long answers. Now, the only difference between the both of them is um, the amount of text they allow. So short answer, change label. All right, I can decide to have this as a text or number, but since we're asking for the home address, that should be left to text. You can also make this required or not, all right, and you save it. Now, that's also how the long answers work. All right, now next we move on to the checkbox um, form field. Now, this field is used to collect information whereby you want your leads to um, check certain boxes. All right, so I can change the label in here to let's say, what is your, so what's your favorite sport? All right, and I can have my checkbox options. So let's say football. basketball and let's add one more golf all right now you can see in here the check boxes have appeared in the previous section now you have the option to allow for multiple selection or um if you leave it on disabled that allows for just one selection so in here i left this no you can see i can select just one item but if i set this to yes then i can select multiple um check boxes all right, and you can also decide to make this field required or not, and then you save it. Next, we move on to the drop down. Now, with the drop down form field, you can also change the label. All right, say for example, I want to have what is your highest what's your highest level of education? All right, now in the drop down. I want to have BSc, I want to have MSc, and I also want to have PhD. All right, now you see, under the preview, in the drop-down section, these are the various um, drop-down options I have in there. So MSc, BSc, and PhD, if I select one, it appears as the selected um, option for this particular field, and you can decide to make this field required or not. All right, so that's with the drop down section. Next, you have the time. Now, with the time, you can change the label and you can set what format you want to have your time in. So, let's say under labels, I can decide to have um, what time is best to call you. Now, for the format, we have a 12 hour format and we have a 24 hour format. All right. Now, with the 24 hour format, you can see um, there's no AM and PM, unlike the 12 hour format, where you need to specify if it's in the morning or in the evening. And you can make this field required or not. All right. You save it with the date. Likewise, you have um, the option to change the label and as well to change the date format. So you have the month, day, year, and you have the day, month, and year. All right. So let's say um, label. What day is most appropriate to call you? 
right or date all right and you can leave it as month day year you can also make this required or not and if you come to the date section you can see we have the date selector in here all right and you can select a date and then you save it then next we move on to the country from field now you can change the label of the country form field and you can also add a placeholder and you can make this field required or not. But under the drop down, you can see all the countries we have um, in the world and you can also search for countries. So let's say United States, you can see, all right, and then you save this. So that's for country, for websites. You can change the label, you can change the placeholder, you can make this website field required or not, but this field um, accepts um, websites URLs. All right, so you can use this field to collect um, websites um, URLs of your leads. Okay, and then you save it. Then um, next we have the number from field. Now this field only accepts numbers, so you can change the label, change the placeholder, make this field required or not, but um, this field only accept numbers. So I'm trying to type in alphabets. It's not going to take an alphabet, but you can have numbers in there. All right, so I can have, um, what is your age? Okay, you can have a placeholder and then this field accepts um, just numbers and then you save it. Now, finally, we have the hidden fields. All right, now as you can see, um, this particular field, you can change the label and you can have your hidden field input. All right, now the purpose of this field is to keep information that is relevant to um, the content creator. All right, and this particular um, content you have in here will not be visible to the quiz taker when the content is deployed. All right, so you can use this field to have UTM um, values in there which you can use in your Google Analytics to track this particular quiz URL, okay? So I can have, let's say, UTM value or whatever um, text I want to have in there. So let's say um, tests from field. All right, now bear in mind this field will just be visible to me and not when the content is deployed to my audience, okay? Now you do that, you save it. All right, now we've gone through all the fields um, on the form fields in here. Okay, now you can also set the button label. So rather than submit, I can say um, see result. All right, and you can also decide to enable or disable the skip option for this field. All right, so if I decide to enable it, Enable skip option. If I go to the preview tab, you can see skip has been enabled. If I disable it, they have to fill this form before they get to see their result. Okay, now you can see what the preview looks like. And then you save it. All right, so that's how you can add a form field to your content and lead quizzes, okay? Thank you.